Annually Talks. I'm your host, Josh McCall. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Nia Brianna, and I'm a broadcast journalism major from Duval. <laughs> Good morning, guys. My name is Marcus Solomon. I'm a second year psychology scholar from Fubal as well. Hello, I am Lyric Porter. I am a senior broadcast journalism student from Chicago, Illinois. Oh, what's, what's going on? I'm excited. I'm Adriana Alexander. I'm a third year broadcast journalism student from West Palm Beach, Florida. Okay, okay. Introduction. So, y'all, we're starting out the first episode with, of course, a little bit of entertainment slash gossip. Okay. Yours truly. Okay. <laughs> According to statistics, studies show approximately one in 100 African, uh, I'm sorry, according to Statista, studies show approximately one in 100 American women and two in 100 American men identify as homosexual, with another 4% of Americans identify as bisexual. Now, has everyone heard about the Dwight Howard incident? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, if you haven't, I'm going to inform you guys. Washington Wizards Center, Dwight Howard, essentially a man accused Howard as a pattern, a pattern of harassment and threats meant to hide the fact that Howard had a relationship with him as well as transgender women and men. There there has been discussion about the veracity of the accusations as well as accusations that Howard's representatives threatened the man to stay silent. So with that being said, I would like to bring up the fact that, you know, Howard is hiding, you know, sports in sports for males, especially um, homosexuality isn't as much accepted. How do you guys feel about, um, homosexuality not being as accepted for men versus women. I feel like, once again, that's something that society has put upon us, especially as men, and especially as him being an athlete. He's like, what, 6'9", six, six, mm-hmm. 200, and I don't know how big he's, he's huge. Mm-hmm. So that he carries around this persona of masculinity. Mm-hmm. So for him to be stepping outside of his gender in a relationship, that is something that would be alarming to people. So. I can see why he felt the need to want to hide that. And he knows how society is. Society bashes men for it, but it's more welcoming to women for it. So that's something that's also on the table. So why, why do you think it's okay for, I, I know you don't think it's okay for society to bash him. Definitely not. But Definitely not. like, why do, why, do you, why do you think Dwight feels like it's, it, it's so important for him to hold it in and hide it from the world? Also, because like I said, he has a masculinity about himself, and we don't, especially us being outside looking in, we expect the people who are in front of us, celebrities, to disclose all of their information. What if he just what, didn't want people to know? But that's something that he just, he has the right to, right. you know, not want people to know about that. So that's something that's also. And moving on to like the second portion. Oh, would you like to say something? Yes, I would. Um, I don't think it should have gotten to the point where he was threatening. Um, Definitely anyone, not, yeah. You know what right. I'm saying? Because if that's who you are, that's who you are. You know, and I personally don't think that he did it because of career purposes. I think that he did it um, out of, you know, personal issues within himself. Mm. And I think that that is the major issue at hand. Right. How do you ladies feel about Dwight Howard, you know, going to the other side and stepping back in, you know? How, how, do, you, how do y'all feel about that? I'm, I'm, I, 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 me, me personally, you know, I probably wouldn't date him, but I mean, yeah, someone yeah. else might, yeah. might too. So you guys yeah. wouldn't, <laughs> would you guys date someone that, you know, had, you know, they were dating the same sex and then going back to the opposite sex? Mm. Like Molly off of Insecure? I personally wouldn't, um, just because we just don't share the same value, morals and values, so therefore we don't see eye to eye, so that's not more so like what you want as a person, more so like can we, are we equally yoked, you know, are we on the same page, Perfect. and we wouldn't be on the same page had you make, you know, made that decision, so. Okay. Yeah, because I definitely wouldn't swirl on the other side, I'm, I'm on one side, <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't have a man swirling on the other side either, personally, so, so I, I don't think I can do that And one. then that's a lot to keep up with, you know, I'm. That's more than Conscious about, about if you mess yeah. with women, I got to worry about if you mess yeah. with men as well. Right. Like, yeah, it, you too, know, much. Yeah. too much. I can't compete. I can't compete. <laughs> That's a whole different ball game. You know, some stuff I can't do, honey. Yeah. Is, is he in a relationship? Is he married? Is he? I, I don't think he's married. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not sure. You got a lot sure. of baby moms, though. A lot, a lot of baby moms. Oh, yeah, a lot of baby moms. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
Sound like you guys. Everybody. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, clearly it's everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Well, listen, so. a lot of people aren't accepted in this world, and a lot of people go through things. And I'm going to talk about black people that go through things in the city as of Tallahassee, uh, as well as everywhere. Definitely. Let me tell you about a story in Tallahassee. Tallahassee, Tallahassee local news station did a story on racist stickers being put on businesses in Tallahassee. Wow. Purple would be one that said, original boys in the hood, with a picture of the KKK on it. What did y'all know about that? You know what um, it was Buffalo Wild Wings wow. on what? Appalachia. Yes, they had it on there. And what hood, though? <laughs> they, they didn't come on this side with that, I know that. And another thing that happened was, you know, after the treacherous FSU season, FSU head coach Willie Taggart went through racist posts People just going off on him, you're a terrible coach, you're this, you're that. Just saying really racist things. And it's really hard living in a city that that's just prevalent in. Oh, man. How do y'all feel about that? Florida is, Florida is, was home on a lot of plantations, a lot of racism did go on in Florida and still does. So, and it's, and it's almost sad that our generation has become almost numb to that type of stuff. Yeah. It, um, it should be, being that we're in 2018, you would think that we've come to the point where Seeing a racist comment or seeing someone doing that should be almost absurd at this point in time, um, right. recollecting on how far we've come as a people and as a nation. But it's almost like we're numb to it. It's almost like it happens so much, especially on social media, that it, man, that's, it's almost it's like disgusting. It's normal. Yeah, it's yeah. disgusting. Like not only is it are we numb to it, but when it happens, it's just like mm, there goes another racist. Yeah. Yep. Along with that's the ridiculous. rest. Yeah. Um, I think our president, you know, Donald Trump, has really just opened the gates for all the racists to just come out and show their true colors. Uh, yeah, do, do you all feel, in, in Tallahassee in particular, because it's the capital and because there's so much police enforcement and government control in Tallahassee, do you all feel a little bit more, I don't want to say afraid, but do you all feel a little bit more that I'm, it's I'm not more afraid. here? I'm not afraid at all. <laughs> um, like, personally, when um, my one of my close friends, when they, when they had to rally out to um, here at FanView for Andrew Gillum, she was more so worried about the racial comments, about mm. them coming in and as to what happened, especially during the time when, looking back, during the time when Donald Trump had his his rallies and they were so like racially triggered Definitely. and she was worried about that so with that being said what you saying am i afraid i told my friend i'm not scared hey if it's my time it's, it's my, my time, time. You gotta do that. but um that's i that's would like never that. back down from any any racial slurs or whatever right. happens Definitely. but i have so i don't sorry. agree with it at all Definitely. Right. we have a right to be here just as uh, everyone else anymore. and that's how i see it so no i'm not afraid either right. and, you know we also have never had a president that is this vocal on social media you know Definitely. using twitter as a platform to bash african americans and you know you have people that retweet that and take that and use that as you know Definitely. motive to yeah. do that in their everyday life but you can't do that you don't you don't have a secret service you know what yeah. i'm saying you cannot go out into the world and treat people that way or yeah. still act like you're above people or because you? <laughs> yeah you know it's no Sheesh. the professionalism <laughs> in america is is has dissolved from presidency all the way down to our level for sure uh, I, it, it was a time where people did hide that aspect of them but now it's like okay who are you what don't you like who don't you like and show them so it's it's disgusting. I guess being drowned in fam, you you know, surrounded by black culture. I personally has never experienced any racial slurs or any racial things here in Tallahassee. Have y'all since y'all been here? I have. I you have? have? Yes. Yeah. I have. Wow. I've been pulled over plenty of times. I dro- I used to drive a Honda on rims, like just because I had rims, they would pull me over. Oh, okay. And I've been pulled over and like four police cars swarm my car. I'm I'm. It's one of me. Wow. Why is it four police cars? Wow. And it's it's That's ridiculous true. and. I'm a fire. I was. I'm a firearm owner as well. And once I mentioned I was a firearm owner, that it was. It was almost. I would just. If was I was scared. a firearm owner, I would just. Personally, but it's safer to say. I wouldn't even say it because it seems like the people that have it. firearms, they're the ones that get shot first. Definitely. Like, mm-hmm. You have a license for that too, right? Yeah, but it's. But it was also. But it was also. You. I feel like you have to say that because one, if you don't say that and they find it, they're gonna assume they're already scared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most in most instances, they're gonna assume True. that you're trying to hide it. So that's gonna be more problems on your end. And so. these days, you can't really assume that they're going to be kind and be like, oh, do you have a license? Anything. They're going to assume that you probably don't probably and arrest you. Mm-hmm. The worst. Yeah. And then you're going to be like, oh, I have a, you know, it's just yeah. too much going on. I had an incident where near FAMU campus, I'm not going to say where, I was at a restaurant and they were singing a, a racially disturbing song about hanging here. Wow. It was very close to campus, down the street. And people think that stuff's so where, far gone. I'm, that's, I'm that's standing there me. like, dang. 
FAMU was right here at Historically Black University, and y'all singing that song. And people assume that it's so far gone, and it's every not. time you want to ease your mind on the fact that that stuff's not here, society has a way of reminding you that it's right here. It's right so. here. Yeah. Do, you, do you guys think it's ever um, going to go away? No. No, no. This, this country was built on no. racism. This country was built yeah, on prejudices. Yeah, I don't think it's ever going to go mm -hmm. away. Well, people are being taught that in their homes, so, you know. It's Definitely. ingrained so, into their lifestyles. <laughs> for sure. So we're going to take a quick break right now. This is your first episode of Family Talks. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us again. This is the first episode of Family Talks, and right now we are joined by Ms. Stephanie Coulter, the coordinator of leadership and service learning here in FAMU's Everson Student Union. Y'all give it up for Stephanie. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Looking good in her purple. Yes. Yes. I'm so loving much. this dress. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I need it. that in my closet. I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you all so much for having me. Thank you so much. No well, tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, um, like she said, my name is Stephanie Coulter. I'm the Leadership and Service Learning Coordinator in Everson Student Union. So that's kind of twofold. I'm over everything that is leadership. So we're revamping the FANG Leadership um, Academy. Um, we've been putting out some emails in regards to adding people to that. And then I'm also over all volunteer services. So anything in regards to volunteer opportunities with Everson Student Union, as well as if anybody does any volunteer activities or anything like that and getting those put on your, red, like on your transcript. Okay. Uh, me, myself, I'm actually originally from Sacramento, California, by way of Phoenix, Sacramento. Arizona. Okay, Sacramento. Right, um, and I'm actually an alum. I got my undergrad degree right here at Florida A&M University, um, and then I left and went to Florida State University uh, and got my master's um, in sports exercise psychology, and now I'm back getting my doctorate um, from Florida A&M right. in biostatistics okay, and epidemiology. That's awesome. Okay. So what do you plan to do with the that? Big one, the big one, the big one. So, <laughs> right, the big one. <laughs> <laughs> the, big the long one. one. No, um, the big one. I actually, my research is in obesity prevention in minority populations um, through okay. nutrition and physical activity. So hopefully, if all goes as planned, I'll be able to open up my own wellness facility wow. in the future. That's great. So back to the leadership aspect of yeah. it, what are you all doing on, 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 on the emails to push the leadership? Are y'all trying to get more leaders to, into the committee or? So the concept of FANG Leadership Academy is basically for those individuals that are interested in getting um, a little bit of framework in regards to becoming a leader, okay. um, but they may not be a part of an organization yet, Absolutely. they may not be an SGA, but they're interested in kind of rebranding themselves and figuring so, out how to be the best leader they can possibly so be. So basically so. teaching people to create their own lane right. as a person. Okay, that's, so yeah, it's self-building like basically. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, um, so now with that, can anyone join? Um, even if you are in multiple organizations, can you still be a part of the service and leadership? Yes, service? most definitely. Um, so prior to before revamping FANG leadership, um, it was that it was only open for freshmen and sophomore. Um, but in dealing with a lot of organizations and working with a lot of organizations, I realized that there are a lot of individuals that can be assisted with leadership skills, um, regardless of how many org organizations you're a part of. So we have opened that up to anyone. They are able to participate as long as they're an enrolled student. And um, what type of resources will the academy provide for the students? Um, so what's really great is we've been reaching out to a lot of even professors here on campus as well as some out guy, outside community um, opportunities um, to kind of give them different aspects where they can learn leadership in different roles, giving them opportunities to kind of put on their own programs and things of that nature uh -huh. as well. Um, since a lot of times they don't get that opportunity if they're not in another organization yeah. or things like that. A lot okay. of things you don't. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Is this offered to undergrad students or just graduate students? Or Und no, undergrad students, undergrad. any students that are enrolled here at FAMU. Okay. Yep. And I, I think that's very important because a lot of students don't really realize what they're good at outside of academics until they join something. So right. I, I think that's a great opportunity to introduce mm -hmm. people to different sides of them and 
different sides of leadership. So Most definitely. I think a lot of people think that they're not leaders um, because they haven't been given the opportunity to become right. one. That's I think true. all of us are leaders in some aspect um, mm -hmm. or some avenue. It's just a matter of figuring out how to be your best leader. Taking so. that first step. Yeah, exactly. How does the um, application process go? So um, it actually closed on November 30th, but um, students had to submit an application. It also included a reference from a faculty or staff member here at FAMU where the staff member actually had to answer a couple questions about the student. Um, we asked the students some questions in regards to leadership, what they think it is, how they feel like they can kind of develop themselves and why they're interested in the academy. Mm -hmm. And then we also asked the faculty and staff member kind of why they feel this student would be great for the program. And it's semester, do you do it every semester? Or is it annually? So the concept is they'll start in the spring semester. Okay. They'll go through their kind of training. It's kind of like curriculum based. Mm -hmm. So kind of the same way you do when it comes to like getting your degree mm -hmm. where you have a certain amount of core classes, then you have like your elective classes. Same premise, but with seminars and programming. So you have your core ones that you have to go to, and then you have like your electives where you can kind of choose what you're interested in. Once they complete that, it's going to be their job to then put on a program the following semester. Oh, so. that's, great. Awesome. that's great. That's great. So awesome. are you the coordinator because you believe that people need to possess leadership because you've been through that as a college student at all? I think yes. I think the reason why I'm so interested in leadership and service learning in general is because it's something that's really close to me. Um, I've always been a leader in aspects, but I've always been kind of a behind the scenes leader. Um, and a lot of the leadership skills that I got were prior to joining any clubs or organizations. And so what I've noticed even in the many organizations that I was a part of is that there were so many individuals coming and filtering through those organizations mm -hmm. that never really got the aspect or the opportunity uh -huh. to become a leader. And what happens is a lot of those people slip through the cracks. Right. And you graduate and you think, I didn't learn anything or I didn't do anything when you had the opportunity but didn't really realize it. So I just want to kind of be able to kind of break through that and let a lot more students have that leadership goal and opportunities. So. What are um, some ways that you developed your leadership? Because I know, um, I remember you, I think I came out to one of your workout classes, and I was like, she's awesome. Like, I want to be like her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fitness guru as well. Yeah. Doctor, on your way to a doctor degree. Right, exactly. That's what I'm super interested in is um, physical activity, nutrition, etc. Yeah, I actually used to have a gym um, as well. Um, but for me, in regards to developing leadership, I think I've always been someone that's had a little bit of leadership in me, but coming out here, so he was talking about earlier where he said, you know, he came out to FAMU and it was like all these African Americans. Well, I grew up in Sacramento and then Arizona, so it was culture shock for me. Um, and I was so used to being this open, loud, hello person, and kind of here it's kind of hit or miss, you know? Yeah. <laughs> some people are here for it and some people aren't. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's something that was kind of instilled, instilled in me as a young person kind of growing up, but I realized that a lot of people don't get that. Um, a lot of people kind of go, kind of go with the flow. And I've never been a go with the flow type of person, and I think that's kind of how I started to like develop my own leadership. Like, hey, I don't like the way this is done. I'm gonna do it my own way. A lot of times, people don't know that they're not a go with the flow type of person until they step outside of that box. That's real. That's it's definitely a lot real. of things you don't realize until you take that step. So I, I do like that. Yeah. So the yeah. students that you guys have in the program, have you seen it make an effect on their leadership skills? since you've been a part of the program? So the great program. question. However, I was just hired in this position in August. Um, yes. So this will be my first cohort that I'm working with um, this spring semester. So I'm super excited to see um, how they're going to develop. And I'm excited to kind of go from there, grow from there. And it's kind of one of those things where I want them to be able to then implement the leadership that they've learned to kind of help me see like, hey, this was beneficial. Hey, these are the things I feel like I wish I would have gotten. That way, when we bring in a new cohort, it'll get bigger and better every time. That's great. Okay. What are some things that you want to see from the leaders that you will bring in um, in the spring? I just want to see them kind of take that first step. I think a lot of times the reason why we don't necessarily join organizations or we don't participate in things is because we feel like, oh, that's not for me, or you know, we kind of fall into this shell. I kind of want to take that shell off of them, and it's kind of like baby steps, not necessarily like, and now I'm going to be the president, but <laughs> hey, now I'm going to participate in this club or this organization, or hey, maybe I want to you know, be on a panel discussion or something of that nature, so that they just feel like they are able to do those and things. Usually it's workshop based or you all have just meetings or we've got meetings we've got seminars we've got workshops we've got some people coming in to actually run some programming for us some outside okay. groups that are coming in we're gonna have like a big retreat for them so okay. I'm super excited about yeah, all of the different good. opportunities they're gonna have yeah and I know you mentioned that you wanted um, some of the leaders to host their own events eventually mm -hmm. so within those events you know they're gonna need some type of resources so we're, will the Epperson Student Union provide those resources or fund them right most definitely so all of our um, facilities that we have here when it comes to clubs and organizations are free for our students and so they'll basically be putting those programs on through me and through Epperson Student Union so they'll have all those resources that are available wow. so that they can get those things done. That's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so now how do you feed each student 
their specific opportunities? Because I know you mentioned that you um, do sort of a survey to see what their interests are and what they enjoy. So how do you? Right. So there is actually a their- right. No, no, that's definitely I understand. Um, so there is a program basically that kind of starts off. It's called Catalyst. And it basically teaches them like what type of leader they are and kind of gives them kind of the ground framework like, hey, these are the things you're good at. These are the things that you may be interested in, but you may need work at. And so then we're able to kind of tailor those answers that they got to the different programming and seminars that we have available. Like, hey, these ones are going to be beneficial for you. You might be interested in these ones. Then they still get the opportunity to kind of pick through those ones as well. That's great. Awesome. That's great. Well, thank you for thank you. We are we are blessed to have you on our show today. Um, I'm pretty sure, and those emails will be sent out regularly as well. Yes, always, most definitely. So this is a service learning, leadership and service learning syndicate, I want to (laughs) say. And she's also on her way to get her doctorate. We are blessed to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm going to need a purple dress, girl. And we all work in purple. So today... (laughs) (laughs) I was born by myself. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so today I, my mind is heavy, and it usually is heavy. I have a lot on my mind, but today's topic concerning the mind, from the mind guy, I want to call myself, is stress in versus out of a relationship. Mm-hmm. A recent study was done that confirmed that 78% of college students reported that they are more stress in versus out of relationships. And I know sometimes we have the stigma, we have the belief that you have the right person, there's no stress. If you, if you are stressed out, it's probably the wrong person. How do you guys feel about that? Do you feel like you'll be stressed regardless of the person you're with? Do you feel like the stress will be minimal if you have the right person? How do you guys feel about that? I personally feel like (laughs) in relationships, when it comes to relationships, I feel like when you're on your grind and you're chasing after that bag, you don't need anything or any distractions in the way. Um, I've seen students here at FAMU who were scholars before they got in relationships, and then they get into these relationships and they just get distracted by these individuals. They fall in love, and it's just a lot. It, a lot goes on when it comes to a relationship. Personally, I haven't been in a relationship since I've been at FAMU, which is why I'm about to graduate this spring. Amen. <laughs> and I just think everyone should. It, it all depends. Whatever floats your boat, then go with it. Okay. Yeah, being a college student and being in a relationship is really hard. I just got out of one, and I feel kind of free, a little heavy, Mm -hmm. a little weight lifted off. I'm really (laughs) happy that I don't have to deal with how he feels, what he doing today. I got to call him, text him. (laughs) Me personally, it's a lot of work. It's a whole other job, and I feel like I just don't have time for it. Just like you said, Mm -hmm. it's clearing my mind to focus on my goal, which is graduating. I don't don't necessarily believe that our relationships, especially a healthy one ideally, will take away from your college experience as, as well as your academic life. I'm in a relationship myself, and... Quite personally, I can detest to the fact that my girlfriend has promoted my excellence in a, in a sense. I feel like if it's a healthy relationship, they're going to promote and they're going to push you to be your best you yeah. in that aspect. So. I, oh, my bad. Are you still right. um, I, just, I think it depends on the person and the person that you're in a relationship with. I think it becomes stressful when you're in a relationship that you're not supposed to be in. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, I'm in a relationship and... I wouldn't say that I stress all the time. Like, yes, we have arguments, but I'm not really stressing about it. When we have arguments, we, you know, it's an argument. You know, we get mad, but we get over it, and we conquer it, and we come out on top, and we come out actually a lot stronger, and we might actually learn something from one another. Um, So I think it it definitely just depends on that type of person. So how much, how would you know if you're negatively or positively stressed? Because I know there's two different types of stress. I feel like if both of y'all are working together constructively, actively, you're going to be stressed because you want your relationship to be healthy. You want your everything to be balanced. So if it's a stress towards that balance, I don't think that's a negative stress. But if you're stressed, me versus you, you cheating on me, I caught you doing this, that's a negative stress. Yeah. How do you all feel about positive versus negative stress? Yeah, I think anything can honestly be stress. Um, when we look at what stress is, I could be pushing you to do better. Hey, yeah. this is unacceptable. We got to do better. We got to push. Definitely. It may be done. stressful for me to make you, you know, go to that next level, but that's not necessarily negative stress yeah. because the end result is a benefit. Definitely. And that type of stress can call, produce growth. Right. I don't feel like you can have any type of growth personally in a relationship, academically, without that stress pushing you to where you want to be. I feel like when you catch yourself in the middle of doing something that you don't do on the regular and you you start stepping out into this 
stepping, you, you become this person that you're not inside of a relationship. Mm -hmm. I think that's the cause of negative, negative stress. stress. Like that's it. That that shows negative stress. Definitely. As far as positive, um, I don't know. I always see the negatives in relationship when I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to do something. It's just that people, you, you just gotta watch playing, yourself. Playing, huh? You know, <laughs> especially in relationships. So oh, man. I'm just gonna keep it at that. How do you guys know you're, if you're stressed? What are some signs that you're that you? You know if your you're partner stressed? is toxic and. Being... No, how do you know if you're stressed? Um, how do I know if yeah, I'm stressed? If you know I'm too much. stressed. Too much. I got you. You're stressing me out. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, you're in, you're in my corner. You know what I'm saying? You're 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 asking a lot of me that maybe I can't give to you. Right Right now and that's stressing me out but you know what sometimes relationships are beneficial to people who don't have that support system elsewhere Definitely. I have a super um, strong foundation of family support so you know I'm always um, encouraged because I always have people in my corner telling me Definitely. you know you can do that you can do that you'll finish you'll get to the finish line and then even friends so you know for people who don't have those um, types of relationships with their family or friends they might look for that in a significant other Definitely. and they might um, be willing to tolerate things that they wouldn't tolerate if they had other sources of support just say something um, personally I know, I notice when I'm stressed, when I can't eat, when I can't drink, when I can't focus, when I can't do my homework. They don't do like, that to me. Anxiety can really just take over me. <laughs> and that's how I know I'm stressed. But speaking of relationships, you know, we have all transitioned from elementary to middle school to high school and now college. And I don't think I'm the only one that can attest to losing friends um, and you know maybe having a group of you know 15 10 to 15 good friends in high school coming down to two in college or maybe one um, and so according to psychology today friendship uh, enhances the quality and pleasure of health um, I really want to pinpoint quality um, a quality friendship is very very important especially when determining who sits at your table as we get older um, our time is winding down so it's really important on who is taking up your time who are you giving your time to so my question to you is um, what are ways that you can weed out the people who determine or should have a seat at your table listen to the signs <laughs> yeah. if you have something great going on and all they can do is focus on the negative girl you can't do that you're not smart enough to do that listen that's not a good signs. friend that's listen not a real to the signs. if you have to me personally what shows me if you're with me or not is if i have to ask you to support me if i have to ask you to support me if i have to ask you to reach out to me if i have to ask you to do anything that's promoting my but if i ask you to go do some stupid stuff you all if i want to go to the club you here but if I say, hey, can you support me on my talk show? Or, hey, can you support me? Can you help me with my homework? Anything right. like that. Right. If I have to ask you with that, you're not, you're not for me. A right. good way to weed them people out, um, I would personally, you know, I, if I feel a toxic individual inside Definitely. of my circle, I just cut them off. Definitely. You know, like, it, there's been times where I've, I've blocked people on social media because I just don't want to see the nonsense. Mm -hmm. And especially when people get on social media and they throw, like, stuff at you, like they throw a shade mm -hmm. shot. This. But that's just not, that's just not a part of just, um, just part of friendships. That's a part of like, yeah, yeah. life. Everyone right. does that right. in, in corporate that. offices everywhere. But back to the friendship aspect of it, I personally have a great friend. Like, I met one of my friends like one of my closest friends since back at home here in college, it all depends on how you study the individual. Definitely. Like I, I, I make sure when I have people in, inside of my circle, I just I just make sure I just pay close attention to Definitely. them. Because you, you just can't trust people. The moment you tr you trust someone is the moment they'll show you otherwise, but why it, you shouldn't trust them. But it kind of sucks that you even have to do that because we're at a time where we don't have time to be checking our corner all the time. Yeah. We don't have time to be reanalyzing people. We should have it to where we're getting to a time where we're getting less and less patience for the BS. So we don't really have time to be checking our corner. True. And we it's, it's getting to the time where people, I have a short fuse when it comes to that short. stuff. You're done. Like, short. You're done because I need everything in me to go forward. I don't mm -hmm. need anything holding me down. I don't, need, I don't have time to be 
I'm already up against enough. Why do mm -hmm. I have to check my own corner? Right. You see what I'm saying? So, so like snip, snip. You know, you get like <laughs> snip, snip. Get it out. It ain't nothing. Definitely. I think a lot of times what happens is, and maybe because I am a little bit older than you all, a lot of times we think that our friends are for a lifetime. And a lot of friends come into our lives simply for a season. There's mm. things that they come to teach us, mm -hmm. and then it's time to let them go. Oh, and a lot of times it. what happens is that we try to hold on to those friends. Oh. And that's when it becomes because toxic. Because they're yeah. not supposed to be there anymore. Right. Yeah, exactly. um, people can be beneficial to you for a season. Definitely. And they can do what they're there to serve for, and then you have to let them go uh -huh. before you have to cut them well, we off. Um, um, so that's what happens right. is that we hold on to them so long that now I have to cut the tie mm -hmm. instead of letting them go when it was time for them to and go. And you can realize that your relationship is like that when you look at the person you're with and you're like, Why? you don't have anything in common anymore. <laughs> yeah, you got but the only reason you're still yeah. here is because you were here when in elementary school. And you look at that person like, what? What are we? What are we even doing here? Right. But okay, but you've been my dog since middle school. You've been my dog since elementary yeah. school. So you're still here this by default. True. But you're not reanalyzing that person because you assume that they're still for you. Right. When they get their feelings kind of faded in that's, middle school. Even <laughs> as you're going through college, those people that I mean, I hate to say it, you all, but those people that you start off with your freshman year may not be the same people that you're locking arms with when you graduate. Mm -hmm. They may not even be graduating with you. Hey. A lot of times, that's what happens my, here my, at my. Fam, Is that that's what really <laughs> cuts off the relationships? Is hey, well, I I graduated next semester and you you missed a couple of classes right. and you didn't do what you were supposed to do and right. so now we're kind of on different paths right um and that's okay to split paths yeah. and right. be on different paths because they're going to find some people that mesh with them and you're going to continue to find people that mesh with you as well it's hard cutting people off. People make it seem like, oh, snip, snip, cut off. But you get used to that person. That's yeah, You get used to talking to them every day. You get used to calling them. Josh is not agreeing with me. It's, it's, it's hard. hard. It's that. I'm telling y'all. When I cut them off, it's just like, zoom, gone. I'm a ton of vision. Bye. It's hard Finito. when they're not doing nothing to yeah. you. But yeah. sometimes your friends be sure they behind. And because, of they, they, because they're your friends, you just, oh, they didn't mean it like that. Oh, they didn't. Right. I know them better than that. But they really be sure they behind. And sometimes you have to like, hold on. They're really? Yeah, 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 no more. So, <laughs> yeah. And if you value yourself and if you value your own time, it, it'll be a lot easier for you because you want health in your life. You want health in your progression. So. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, along with reevaluating your circle, I think it's super important to also um, evaluate the type of health care experience that you want to have. Us as African Americans, you know, we don't typically go to health care facilities. We don't typically trust doctor's offices. You know, it takes a lot just to get us to go to an urgent care facility or anything, you know, it's just a twist of the arm. The dentist, everything, you know, we just really don't do it. And um, that is definitely an issue. But um, a along with growing into age, we begin wanting to start families. And with starting fami families, um, we begin having children. And so one of my major issues for today is the disparity that African-American women and other women of color are facing um, while they try to give birth. Mm. Um, so, for instance, today in America, black women are three to four times more likely to die of pregnancy or delivery complications than white women. Wow. And I think mm. that that is truly unacceptable because, you know, this is something that my body is supposed to be made to do. You know, right. why am I not receiving Stress. proper proper health care or you know why is my physician not listening to me or why am I not a factor or why am I not important to them those are all things that need to be addressed because um, although it may seem that the number is due to socioeconomic disadvantages um, I want to make sure that I'm being clear about the fact that when it comes to African Americans um, a wealthy black woman with an advanced degree is still more likely to die or have a baby die than a mm. poor white woman without a high school diploma. Wow. And that is just I don't I don't think awful. people understand <laughs> the the fact that regardless of what you are and where you are in life, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of stress that comes with being a black person, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can be in a you can be in a in a disenfranchised neighborhood or you can be in a suburb mm -hmm. you can be a suburban. Mm -hmm. So either way you're gonna be you're gonna be up against a lot of stress and a lot of pressures that a lot of other races don't see and don't feel. And it's subliminal stress. It could be stuff from your childhood or something from your, your family that people don't uh, take into account. And I, but I also do feel like in our communities, we should put more emphasis on our health, on um, making sure that we're taking the necessary precautions to ensure that we are having more healthy births and pregnancies as well. 
Mm-hmm. It's definitely scary being a black woman, knowing that I could die for having my baby, but you know, a That's white cool. woman, she's fine. You don't hear a lot of those stories. So it's scary being a black woman. I might not have a, a successful pregnancy because my doctor didn't hear me when I said I got a cold, didn't hear me when I said my stomach was sore, not right. taking heed to what I'm crying out and telling you. That's a scary thought. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, and then, um, you know, not knowing our medical history is also a huge factor yeah. in that, mm-hmm. you know, because it's a lot of these things are definitely, um, you know, genetic. They're yeah. passed down through a genetics. A lot of times we have stuff. We inherit yeah, them. We have stuff inherited to us we don't even know because right. grandma's not going to tell you what's going on with her. Yeah. She's going to make it yeah. sound like everything's sure. okay. And her grandma probably has something going on. And because we have a history of not trusting uh, health facilities. So right. mm-hmm. a lot of stuff sure. does go unannounced or um, unaddressed in our communities. But it's time, it's definitely time to take. So to health disparities in general is a huge topic in public health. Um, mm-hmm. So there's health disparities when it comes to any type of health ailment. African-Americans and Latino women, men are always at a higher um, risk than any other race that we have um, mm-hmm. here in America. Um, and one thing we tend to look over and yes all of the options that you guys have given are definitely reasons why we have those issues but on top of that um, when you look at the stress levels in regards to an african-american woman and a caucasian woman or a pain level or a threshold um, for a caucasian woman it's been shown statistically that their threshold is a lot lower so Mm -hmm. when i go into the doctor's office and they ask me how are you feeling how are things going Mm -hmm. I'm quick to say this is an issue, this is an issue if I'm a Caucasian woman versus for an African American woman, her stress level is so much higher that she's less likely to really complain about anything. So a lot of times, a lot of the issues go unnoticed. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are still issues when it comes to dealing with our healthcare, you know, facilities and things of that nature. However, a lot of times, our African American women are coming in there and they're saying, no, I'm fine, there's no issue, because for them that isn't an issue. I've lived with this pain all the time, so it's nothing new. So So when you ask me, has anything changed over this last time I saw you, no, nothing's changed, because (laughs) I've had this issue for so long that I'm not reporting it at all. Um, I've had this issue so long I don't even know how to address it. I don't even know what's Exactly. So it's really about health education in our communities and figuring out how we can show them like this is how it's supposed to be because a lot of times (laughs) we're going off of like you said I'm going off of grandma and she had three jobs and you know she took care of her and she took care of her, her husband, her kids and their kids, kids and her grandchildren and You know, she went through it and she said, you know, you just got to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so then I have that culture. And so I said, you know, I can't complain about little things because look at all these other issues that I'm going, you know, and there's no reason for me to come to the doctor and say, hey, I need to do this. Uh Not to mention a lot of our African-American women don't have health insurance um, that's covering those things. So you want me to pay upwards of $75, $85 to go see a doctor to tell them that I have a cough. Right. No, I'm not going to. Whereas a lot of these, you know, Caucasian, believe it or not, we have more Caucasian women that are on WIC and that are on food stamps and EBT than we do our African American women. Although we try to portray it in the media that it's mostly our skin color, a lot of times it's not. And so for them, I'm on Medicare and things of that nature. I can go in and tell you anything and get any test taken Mm -hmm. and I don't come out of pocket at all. Versus for me, if I do tell you I'm having an issue, Mm -hmm. then you tell me, okay, great, this is going to cost this amount and you didn't take this test, that's going to be that much. So pay me first and then I'll take care of you. And then a lot of times, um, our pain is also silence. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If I go to the doctor and I'm saying, oh, I'm having these extreme chest pains or I'm having this abdominal pain, oh, you know, you'll give me the lowest dose of medication, but mm-hmm. you'll give my Caucasian counterpart the highest dose. Mm-hmm. So it's just all about, you know, perception and what we are perceived as because a lot of times we are perceived as um, drug seeking, mm-hmm. um, substance yes. abusers, things like that, but really, it's Caucasian men. Help, yeah. exactly. Caucasian men are the <laughs> highest statistic of drug seeking oh, um, exactly. abusers. And then, you know, someone who has such a huge legacy like Serena Williams having issues, you know, during her child delivery, that is She's extreme first. because you would think that someone, an uh, athlete of that magnitude, would not have those type right. of issues. They would respect her, they would make sure that she that her delivery runs smoothly, everything mm. like that. But really, but you know, she's, she's having the same problems as everyday women as definitely. Right. But she's she's one of the biggest global on a global stance, one of the biggest tennis players on the planet. Mm-hmm. So right. when you think when you hold that position, you don't really have time to heal or address what's going on in your life personally. So you're always going, you're waking up for workouts, waking up, going for meetings, going for press conferences. Mm-hmm. So you rarely ever have time to address the issue. So when it does come where it's time to calm down and, and produce a baby, the stress levels are so high that a baby can't function That's in that yeah. in that environment. Right. So. Scary. 
Well, that is all I have for you guys today. Um, and I think that just about concludes our show. So <laughs> thank you all for joining us. I am Lyric Porter. Adriana Alexander. Michael Solomon. Nia Brianna. Your boy Josh Burkell. <laughs> <laughs> and then our lovely host again, Miss Stephanie Coulter. Oh, thanks so much for having <laughs> me, you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for the audience here as well. Please give yourselves a hand. Also. Thank you so much for our show. I know it's early. We appreciate you guys for coming out. Thank you. That was episode one, y'all. Have a great one.